Hello, this is Katie and today's tutorial is a really simple one. So we're just going to look at a really basic wrapped loop. It is the nemesis of so many jewellery makers, especially when you're first starting off, but getting a really perfect wrapped loop. So one that is an actual round at the top, like a lollipop, some really nice wraps in there and not kind of ruining the rest of the wire while you're at it. So you can use these as a, a type of... Um, like a, an eye pin that's more secure because it's, it's not going to open you're going to use these like on the top of um, your beads to make drops um it it's it's the best connection you can make when using wire in jewelry making making because nothing can get out of there once you've linked something in there it can't get out um it's perfect for your rosary linking too i do have a rosary linking video which shows you this technique and how to connect lots and lots of them together with beads in between but today we're just going to look at the basic wrap loop and using different wire gauges for wrap loops and the size of the the loops that you you will need and it's all about balance within your jewelry also so i've got a few different selections of wire so the wires that I'm going to show you today, I've got your 0.4, which is your 26 gauge. I have got your 0.6, which is your 22 gauge. And I've got some 0.9, which is 19 gauge. So you can make a wrap loop with any gauge wire. You just need the right tools and the right size loop to um, mandrel to, to do it with. And I'm also going to show you how to pop a wrap loop on top of a bead. So I've got some head pins just to the side. And I've got some beads just set to one side that we can use too. So for a wrapped loop, you need a pair of round nose pliers or a baling plier mandrels. So that is all of these here. So I've got different sizes of round nose pliers. I've got some kind of standard pair. I've got these which are very fine they go to a very fine tip and then you can also use mandrels such as your bail making pliers to make a consistent size again and again and again the other thing that you're going to need is a good pair of chain nose pliers or flat nose pliers if you want to use flat nose pliers um i tend to use chain nose pliers because you've got when you close those up you can see we've got a very fine part here and we can change the size it will come become clear as i move on but change the distance of where wraps are going to go by using different parts of this so i've got those ones and you can see the difference i've got some really fine nose um, chain nose pliers so they make a huge difference just having a bit of a selection but if you're just starting out just go for a standard pair of chain nose pliers and some flush cutters so just your standard flush cutters absolutely fine when i say flush cut if we look at a pair of flush cuts, cutters, on this inside bit, we've got a little groove. Now that will leave a little point on the end of your wire. On this side, it's nice and flat. So whenever we're cutting, and I say flush cut, so we want to cut it flush, the part that we're keeping. So if I was to cut this, I would put the flush side towards the part that I'm keeping. because I want to keep the part that's got the, um, the wrap loop on it. And I will cut it flush. I don't know whether we'll be able to see on the camera. But can you see how this side has a point and this side is flat? So that's the side we want to keep. That's the good side. This one is a point, it's going to be very sharp. We don't want to, we don't want that as part of our jewellery. Okay, so we've talked about the wire, we've talked about the tools. Let's get on and make some wrapped loops. I'm just going to move a few things out of the way. Put my round nose pliers over there chain those over here and keep my flush cutters nice and handy so we're going to start with the largest gauge wire so this is 0.9 you can use any large gauge you want we're just kind of doing this for practice now if i'm using a larger gauge wire i would probably go with a larger um loop on it so I'm going to be using my standard pliers, my standard round nose pliers, and I'm going to do this about halfway down. First of all, I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. Now, when I'm making these angles for to start creating, I pop the wire really far down in my pliers. This is because this is the strongest part of your pliers and you'll get a really good angle. So 
my loop is going to be on this side here. I've got probably about four centimetres from here to this side of the ply. That's giving me plenty of wire to create my loop with. You don't want to be trying to create a loop and wraps with a tiny piece of wire and struggling. So what I want you to do is make a really good angle. So I've got more or less a right angle there, 90 degree angle. So this is the part that I'm keeping. This is the part where any beads or anything that I'm going to be using would go on to. And this is the part that is going to create my loop. So I'm going to pop my pliers on. I'm using a nice big gauge wire. So that means I can make a larger loop. So I'm going about halfway down my pliers and I'm just pushing that tail all the way around. So if I just go back to there, I've popped my pliers in on that shorter side and as close up to that angle as I possibly can be. And I'm just going to push this all the way around until I can't push it anymore. OK, so we kind of have, to have this shape. So then I'm just going to hold the wire. I'm just going to reposition my hands. So I've just gone from here to here. So I'm repositioning. OK, and then the next thing I'm going to do, I can go under or over with this piece of wire. So I'm just going to go under. And then I can look at this and assess it. So I can take out my pliers. I can look at it, assess it, make sure you're happy that that's a nice round loop and that your wire, your tail wire is coming out at a 90 degree angle from the wire that we're keeping. You're working your, your base wire here. So that is when we're going to just move the round nose pliers to one side. A lot of people continue with the round nose pliers and it doesn't give you as much strength it doesn't retain the loop as well because you think if your pliers are in here it can't change but it can it can slip up and down so what we're going to do is we're going to swap over back to our chain nose pliers and we're going to hold that loop right across the loop and again i'm using the strongest part of my pliers so i've come down here and i'm holding it it's almost down to that to the very bottom but we don't want to squish that bit because we'll damage it and now we've got lots of strength. So I've got my dominant hand. So mine is my right hand. I'm right handed holding those pliers. And I'm going to use my left hand, my less dominant hand to very gently and slowly. The trick is not to rush. Wrap around the stem of this wrapped loop. So I've gone all the way around once. And then again, all the way around again. And traditionally, we do three wraps. That is because we do most things in threes with jewelry making because in, in odd numbers, it doesn't have to be three. Just because it draws your eye to the centre and it, it just creates balance. So there we are. We've got a really lovely wrap loop. I've gone around three times. Now I need to move in with my flush cutters. So again, I'm going to cut with the flush side closest to my work because that's the part that we're keeping. So I've put my pliers in as far up to that as I possibly can. Give that a snip. So, and then we've got our lovely wrap loop, but that little bit of a wire that we just snipped, can you see? It's just protruding tiny, tiny bit. So we go back in with our chain nose pliers and just give that a little squish. You can use any part of your chain nose pliers for this. Just making sure that there is nothing kind of scratchy or protruding and I'm a lot happier with that now. There we go. So that's our first wrap loop. So taking your time and just really, really making sure that you've got that perfect circle. You retain the shape by using your chain nose pliers and then really taking your time with them wraps. You will get a really beautiful wrapped loop. So we're going to do it a couple more times. I'm just going to move down in the gauges of wire. So this is my 0 0.6 millimetre wire, which is a 22 gauge. Again, we start with a good angle. So again, I've come about four centimetres in. Create a really good angle. Use that bottom part of your pliers where you've got all that strength. Got a good angle to work with. I'm going to, because I've gone down in gauge, I need my loop to be a little bit smaller just because it will create more strength that way. The smaller the, the loop, and the, sm the smaller the gauge wire, then that's we, we need to kind of just reduce that size of loop because it will create more strength in the loop. There's more strength in your design. So we've got our pliers perfectly in place. So this is the shorter part. This is the part that I'm going to wrap. 
and my pliers go on this part so the part that we're going to wrap so i've moved down a little bit on my pliers you can see there i was kind of in the middle before and again i'm going to push that tail wire all the way around to the opposite side it's a lot softer wire is this so we just have to be a little bit more careful a bit more gentle i've repositioned my hand again to the other side i'm going to come under or over make sure that i'm happy with my loop before i start that looks a little bit off to me so i'm going to pop my pliers back in and just make sure that i am perfectly happy with how that loop is sitting i'm a little bit happier with that so then i'm going to go back in with my chain nose pliers and wrap around so popping it it's a little bit slippier a bit trickier on the finer wires popping that around three times making sure i'm happy with that loop I'm happy with my wraps and then i can snip off and just go back in with my chain and those pliers Hold that and I can just smooth out the rest. So that you do tend to, on the finer gauges, tend to end up almost squishing your wire. You need to be quite careful. You can use your pliers just to kind of push those together. I'm really happy with that wrap loop too. And we're going to go on to the smallest gauge. So for the smallest gauge, I'm going to move to my finer pliers. You could use the very tip of these, but I do like to use as many tools as possible just because I can. Again, we'll move to my smaller chain nose pliers too. So we're going to make that angle, nice, neat, sharp angle. I'm going to pop my round nose pliers on right on that corner again. So this is the bit that I've popped, that I've pushed away and my pliers are on this side, on the side that I've pushed away. So right up into that corner, around, all the way around, then I can reposition my pliers. So I'm just repositioning by, just by twisting my hand. I'm gonna go over the top this time. Just make sure you're happy with the loop that you've made. If you're not, just go back in. Just make sure you're really happy with it. Happy with that. And then again, I can go across, hold that loop, nice and gently pop in my three wraps or however many wraps you are doing so i've got my little wrapped loop in there let's get that to focus there we go so i'm really happy with that and then i can go in with my flush cutters and snip off flush side towards my work once again and then I can go in with my chain nose pliers, not my round nose pliers, and just make sure that ends nice and squished down. So I've got my three wrapped loops and I can create, I can pop beads on them and create links, connectors, um, anything I like, earrings, you know, whichever. So I'm just gonna grab a bead, just bear with me a second. Okay, so got a shell pearl here let's go with the 0.6 so now if you wanted to make this into an actual connection so a rosary link as such what you need to do is assess how big these wraps are here how much room did they take up because we want the other side to match also don't we so what we need to do is when we create the angle for the opposite side we need to look and assess what we did at the, the previous side. So thinking about the width that those wraps are taking up, you need to push your bead up and pop your pliers in about the same width as the opposite side. It will look like it's less, but you just need to, you will learn and you'll learn to trust yourself eventually. So. I'm going to create that angle there. So now I've created that angle. 
but my bead will still move. I've got some movement in there, but that's where our little wraps are going to go. So I'm going to go back in with my round nose pliers. This time I've pushed it away the opposite direction. It doesn't matter, but I've gone back in and I've put my pliers on the side that I've pushed away. So it's on this side, but right up to that angle that we made. And I'm going to push it all the way around and push it all the way around until I can't move it anymore. Reposition my pliers and then I can take it across. OK, so I'm just going to look at that, assess it, make sure I'm happy with the size of the loop. If you need to make any adjustments, do so now. I'm just going to push that down a little bit on there. So I'm happy with that. The other thing that I'm looking for is my loops are in the same direction. So these loops are both kind of flat towards the um, the desk here. So that is quite an important thing for getting things to lay properly, especially when you're rosary linking. So I'm happy with this here. I'm going to pop in my pliers. So I'm holding that loop to retain that shape. And I'm going to go around once, twice, and three times. And now I've got three loops at each side. So it fits really nicely. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that's nice and squished in. I go in again, flush side closest to my work and give that a little squish. And now I've got a little rosary link or a little connector bead and I've got the same amount of wraps on each side. So it makes it more balanced. OK, so the other thing that you're going to do, you're going to do using that little technique is if I just take a bead and pop it onto a head pin. A lot of people just tend to roll it around and make a loop. Whereas if you want it super, super secure, you can pop your pliers in and create that angle and pop a wrapped loop on the top of it. So that would create a dangle for an earring or a charm, something like that. So I know this is a little bit thicker gauge wire, so I've just come down very, very slightly further on my pliers. Like I said, you will get used to wires and what what it takes to do three wraps eventually. But always less is more. So I'm going to push that away. I've got to my little angle away. You can see my bead will still move, but that is where those wraps are going to go in. I'm just going to grab my round nose pliers. Now pop my pliers all the way in. And like I say, it doesn't matter whether I've pushed it away or to myself. I can still do it this way also. I can also do it that way. And then I'm going to push this all the way around to the other side. I can take my pliers out there so you can actually see the shape. Then I can just pop them in. You don't need to take yours out. And then I'm going to come all the way around and pass under or over. It doesn't matter which way you're going. I've got my nice loop sat on the top there. Swapping over to my chain nose pliers. Hold onto that loop. That's the most important part, holding onto the loop. And really taking your time to pop your wraps in like so. So I've got three nice wraps in there. I'm happy that looks nice and balanced. And then I can just go in with my flush cutters, give that little snip, nice and flush. And again, back to my chain nose pliers, just to make sure that end is nice and squished. So there we go. This is how we make wrapped loops. So I hope you've enjoyed that and got something from that. Um, I intend to do lots of little techniques videos. So if there's anything you want to see, drop a comment be below. Let me know what you want to see. And don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you again very, very soon.